What's up guys? So, being visual effects artists, we're really big into 3D scanning. We've been using it a ton in the past for rag dolls and models and things we need for various visual effects shots. But very recently, we've started taking this skill and instead of applying it on screen, we've been applying it off screen by doing 3D scans and 3D printing. So in this video, we're gonna show you guys how to make your own action figures, whether you have 3D modeling skills or not. In order to make your own action figure, there's three basic things that you need. The first is a copy of Occipital Skinect or Reconstruct Me. We'll get into the differences later. The second thing you need is an Xbox Connect. Make sure it is one with a normal USB port and not a proprietary Xbox port. That's crucial for getting it to work with your PC. The third thing you'll need is either a Shapeways account or a 3D printer of your own. If you want to go on the cheap here, I'd recommend a Shapeways account as it will save you a few thousand dollars. Using this process, you can make everything from full colored miniatures you see here, a little bit more like an action figure, to very small miniatures which can be used for various role playing games such as Dungeons and Dragons and we'll show you what to do for both. After you've gotten all your gear together, you'll want to open your scanning application. If you're a beginner without 3D modeling skills, you're going to want to use Skinect. Skinect allows you to go from scanning to cleaning up the model to printing the uh, model through Shapeways all in the same application. No other skills are required. However, if you are versed in 3D modeling, I highly recommend using Reconstruct Me. Reconstruct Me gives you a little bit more detail to work with. However, more cleanup work is required. Before you start scanning, there's a couple considerations you want to uh, be aware of. The Kinect has two cameras on it. One is an infrared camera that senses depth and 3D space. The other one is a normal camera that captures color. But in order to use these properly, you need a certain amount of space, about a 10 to uh, 15 foot radius generally around your uh, subject. Do not wear anything that's reflective because the bouncing light rays off this reflective uh, material that you might be wearing will confuse the camera and confuse the depth and screw up your 3D model. Natural sunlight has a lot of infrared frequencies in it and since the infrared camera on Connect uses those to gauge depth, that will also start throwing off your uh, scan. In your scanning program, you want to make sure that you've set your scanning area, your scanning box, to be as close in to that person as possible to maximize the resolution of the scan. All right, so I'm turning the monitor around so I can see it while I'm scanning. I've got a USB extension uh, so I can walk around and have a little more freedom to move here. And looks like our scanning area is pretty solid here. So hold perfectly still, control your breathing, going. Getting every nook and cranny here. You want to remember to go down and look up. You want to go up, get the top of the head, tops of hands, be very carefully. Go behind them, don't trip over the cable. Our first scan of the model is done. There's still a few small errors in it, but that's okay because in Skinect you can clean that stuff up. Boom, I'm going to fill some holes on that. Done. So there's no more holes. I'm also going to colorize it in case we wanted to print this with color. And now this is going to go back through and take all the color data from the camera and make that into a texture. Boom. There's a full texture here. Wow, look at that. How sweet is that? It looks pretty sweet actually. Our last thing we want to do before we print <laughs> this, as you can see there's still a lot of ground in the shot here. We don't want to print the entire ground plane, so what you'd want to do there in Skinect is you'd want to crop that out and it's pretty easy to just quickly orbit it around. Select the stuff you don't want. So the last step here is if you are using Skinect, you can simply just click on this share feature, click on the print uh, Shapeways 3D print, and log in with your Shapeways account. Boom. And from there, all you gotta do is type it in, you scale it, and print it out. So, now that we've done our Skinect version, we're gonna show you the Reconstruct Me version. This is slightly more high detail, and much better when you're trying to make a figurine which is super, super, super tiny. And so the reason Adam is standing with his hands out like this is because later on, because we're 3D modeling experts, we're gonna be throwing a modeled sword into his hands because 
As you can see, when you're scanning, it's hard to hold perfectly still for 30 seconds and have a high detail object such as a sword or something thin. There's the natural like wobble and shake to those objects. And it's very difficult for the scanner to catch that. And also because, yeah, exactly. A sword is very reflective too. Bad idea for scanners. That one is super solid actually. And just with a tiny bit of cleanup there, we're good to go. It's freaking amazing. Boom. So as you'll see on first import into your 3D program of choice that we have similar issues as we did in Skinect. I will go in to the vertices of the piece here and you can just quickly select them all and delete the ground plane. It's good to select all your elements, deselect the thing that you want to keep and hit delete because sometimes there's mysterious random little points out there and that will freak out a 3D printer. As you can see, this is now Adam on his own. There is no color, no texture, but we don't need that where we're going because on the detail level that we're gonna be printing at, we're gonna to have to paint these on our own. The last step you wanna do is use a modifier uh, that will fill the holes up. So you wanna use a modifier in 3ds Max called Cap Holes. If you're not using 3ds Max, I'm sure there is a equivalent one in your program. The only thing you have to do from there is scale it to the size you wanna print it at. If you're making a miniature for Dungeons and Dragons like this, about an inch and a half high. If you're making a miniature just for yourself, it can be any size, but just be aware, the bigger it gets, the more expensive it gets. He's actually going to model a 3D cape in and have his figure actually being held up by the cape model. It's gonna be kind of cool. Reminds me of Max Payne. <laughs> like the, the first one. Yeah. Where you're constantly grimacing. That'll be sweet with like just a little tweaking on the legs. There you go. That one's actually the biggest model. That's pretty solid. I hope you guys learned something from this small introduction into the world of 3D scanning and 3D printing. If you guys want to try this out, I highly recommend trying out either Skinect or Reconstruct Me, depending on your skill level. And I highly, highly recommend using uh, Shapeways as a 3D printing source because of the vast amount of materials they have. And if you guys have any questions about 3D printing or applications, leave them in the comments below or hit us up on Twitter at Corridor Digital. Thanks for watching.